Lord God the Father, just ask you to bless this time, Lord, and this word, the word that's magnified even above you, Lord God, and a name that every knee shall bow. Lord, preferably, Lord, they bow before they die in receiving your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as their Savior. Lord, bring with us this time. Lord, I pray for some growth. Lord, winter's coming. It gets cold here, Lord. And for your honor and glory, for Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. All right, so we've been dealing with the light. And just go back to John chapter 1. And we've been transitioning ourselves from the Word to the light, looking at the heart last week, what man is. With that heart, it's not very good. So, if John 1, verse 8 and 9, we'll move out of these two verses eventually. we got some great stuff coming up, Lord. Well, we're going to get into tribulation. Mm-hmm. We're going to get in... Uh, oh. He was not that light. That's John. But was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And we remember, we started with that verse there. Every man that is born is born with the acknowledgement that God, there's a supreme being. There's a person or thing or something up there that made all this. It didn't happen by accident. And we are, we are put into that notion into our heart. Now, with that thought, that God has given every human being born that lives, I am here, your conscience, you are put by God. When you steal that first cookie, you hide from your parents. You don't walk up to your mom with your mouth full of cookies. I'm going to throw cookie. <laughs> you hide. What is that? That's the conscience that God has given man to say, you're guilty. And if you fear your mother and father, you will fear me. Unless you're taught out of it. Now that's going to be our lesson today, Romans chapter 1. Men have been taught not to believe in God. And pretty much, you think I'm going to mention, and I will mention, schools, public education, private education. I'm going to also talk about religions that have doctrinated people out of the belief of God. That there, Jesus Christ is not God, He's just a wonderful person. Oh, it's not God, it's our church that will save you. Oh, no, we're aliens, we're populating other planets, so let's have multiple wives. Oh, no, if you cross your arms and cross your legs without medicine and hookamooga yourself, you can get with that reality. Or the fact is, you know, death is not, you're going to come back and be a cockroach or something. That's, that's the realm of religion I just mentioned. That is people who go somewhere, whether it be a church, a temple, a, a, a synagogue, or whatever they call it, that is somewhere where they're supposed to honor and worship a supreme being, and it's not so. And you send your children, you want your, most people want the best for their children, and you send them off to public school and they start learning junk. In the beginning, there was nothing, but that nothing exploded. That's impossible. Now, you, you direct them from, from history of nothing came something into the science class, and the science class will teach them that that nothing is impossible to be something. And the fact is, the rules of science is that it has to be seen, it has to be observed, and evolution has never been observed, and it's never been seen. You say, what about God? How many men and women saw God and witnessed God and heard God? Now, I have never seen God's face. I have never seen Jesus Christ, but the testimony after my salvation, the testimony that He walks with me and talks with me is real and true. I can know it. Not feel it. I can know it. So we run into Romans 1.22. And let's take a little course here. I do believe... I do believe we're going to go right back to John after this. Then we'll be right out of John again. John is... I didn't realize how wonderful John was. Look at all the avenues yeah. we've been in. Amen. I didn't think we were going to go back to creation. I didn't think we were going to go back and look at angels and... 
light. And we've seen salvation work. We have to explain to, to all of us how to witness the lost people and realize it's not their fault they're lost. It's That's just right. darkness. And realize that Satan's working in them. And to be more patient with them to realize, hey, like us when we first got saved, we had no idea. So John, I mean Romans 1.22 it says, professing themselves, professors, to be wise. Look at my wall. You see all the diplomas on my wall? Look at them. See? That's why doctors put them on the wall so you can, ooh, ah, look how smart this guy is. But they're only practicing. They practice medicine. God knows. What they try to practice on your body, God knows about your body. That's why you got to go to God first in prayer over what you have. They became fools. So professors, scholars, doctors, flattery tiles of no use to God. You realize God does not need a doctor? God does not need a scientist. God does not have to seek any counsel from any man on what he's going to do, what he said he's going to do. They realize the fact is, and it can happen. Ma'am, we found that you got a lump and it's cancer. And you may, and it, and it happens, I've heard it. You may go back to the doctor the next visit, and the next step. This scan says there was a lump and it's cancer. This scan says there is none. There is no cancer. And you may go back to the doctor and they'll say, you know what, it's growing. And Jesus told them, and said, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. And there are religions out there that will teach, well, you can't go to a doctor. Jesus said, listen, first go to God, and if you need a doctor, go to a doctor. There's nothing wrong with blood transfusions. I would just say, make sure you test it. Please. And when Tracy went through that and they did it through me, just make sure you test it. I don't care. Make sure there's no diseases. Other than that, pump it. But there are religions out there who say, you know, you don't do that. Jesus said you can you are not, as a Bible believing Christian, say to the world, well, I can't use you. I don't need you. God is going to heal me. You realize there were some people in Jesus' ministry I'm reading through the Gospels now that did not get healed? That was amazing. I read that and say, many were healed. Many? Many means not all. So, first thing, yeah. Go to God first, and if God allows you to go to a doctor and seek a doctor. Keep praying. But God may, he don't need the science. And they're going to stand before God one day and give an account. There are saved doctors out there. There are wonderful doctors. Amen. And then there are losers. So, they became wise. Their foolishness. Man's wisdom, Job 28, 28. Job 28, 28. Ooh, I had such a hard time training. I'm going to Walmart today, get soda, get those little rubber finger things. Yeah. It's right before, right there. Job 28, 28. Now, 28, 28 is one of those verses that if you can't memorize, know it, write it somewhere extra, maybe in the, in the blank pages and begin your Bible. This is one of those wonderful verses. And unto man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. All right, so when you look at those diplomas, say, Doc, are you wise? Yes, I am. Are you able to... Take care of it. Yes, I am. Do you believe in God? Oh, no, there's no God. You're not wise. Mm, that's right. There's the test. Now, if I go to you, Louise, I say, Louise, do you, do you love and fear God? Do you know who He is? And you say, yeah, you're wise. You're smarter than that doctor. And if you were to go into the high school room as a Christian student and walk in there and say, oh, yes, Mr. Whatever, Fred, Sir, do you, are you wise, able enough to teach us this year what we're going to learn in the classroom? Yes. Do you have knowledge of what we're going to Yes, I do. Do you believe in God? No, I don't. You're a fool. Mm -hmm. Amen, brother. 
And there are going to be people at the great white throne judgment. May, I believe that God's going to let them speak at the great white throne. Now, whether he does or don't, I don't know. But, but I, think, I think God's going to let them say whatever they have to say, get it all off their chest. Mm -hmm. And God's going to say, okay, fine. You, you were a nuclear physicist, and you did these nuclear power plants, a nuclear submarine. You did everything nuclear. Great, right? Yes, I did. Okay, that's true. But did you know me, and did I know you? No, you're a fool. Depart from me. Fools. The fool has said in his heart, there's no God. Psalms. So he says unto man, he said, Behold the fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. So what do you put on your wall? What do you do? I believe the King James Bible. That's my doctrine. And I'm still learning. I do not know the whole Bible. That is wisdom. And, and to depart from evil is understanding. When that sin or any sin comes in your life, you say, No! Not only are you wise because you love the Lord and know Him, but now you have understanding. No, I'm not doing that. Because right. of God. Amen. I'm not doing it because it's going to affect my body. As scientists say that it will ruin my kidneys, it will ruin my brain. The fact is, it is not a good testimony to God. No. Now you have wisdom and understanding. I had a doctor one time, it was so funny, because when I was going for breathing and COPD and it had problems and told me I had emphysema from smoking. You know, you ought to quit that smoking. So I went, we went shopping one day, and there's the doctor. He's outside in the parking lot, and he's puffing on cigarettes. I walked up to him the same time. I said, like, Doc, are you serious? what are you doing? What did you just tell me two weeks ago? That guy didn't have no, that guy was wise to take care of lungs, but he had no understanding. And that's what the Bible says. Understand is when you say to your sin, no. I understand that God doesn't want me to do this. I already know who God is. I'm wise on that. So, man's wisdom, Psalms 111.10. But you didn't know you had that wisdom already in you. You have wisdom that any physicist, physics, scientist, educator has. You have the knowledge and wisdom of God, of knowing God, and God knows you. I, I always played this out, and I don't know if it's true or not. But what if, see, man can't even, just, man doesn't know what gravity is. They have no idea. They have theories. And another thing a man cannot, there's two things in the body that man can explain. They can't explain the hiccup. They don't know why we hiccup. Now, there are evolution theories like that, but they don't know. And another thing, they cannot explain an itch. When you get that scratch, that itch, they don't understand what that is. It's nerves. And what be the thing is, when we all get to heaven one day, and God, I forget what, what, what they do, what they try to do with Daniel and the three young men in, in Babylon, they try to unteach them the Jewish rites, the Jewish root, by bringing them to Babylonian customs. What if we have to have a class once we get to heaven? He's got to unworld us. That's not what water was. Let me show you how simple water was. And for you worldly Christians, let me show you that that wine I made from water, first of all, I didn't drink it. Second of all, it was not intoxication. That's why it was great juice. All right, let's get that down. I think we're going to have to have a class of worldly Christians. They're going to have to come up to date to those Bible believers. Because <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people when the rapture happens, they're going to be shocked. What the heck just happened? Why am I in the club? Why am I in the club? What's that man? Who's that man? That don't look like the hairy Jesus I've seen on postcards in Christmas time. And there are going to be a lot of people who think they're saved when the rapture happens. They're going to be still here. If it happens in church, do you realize how many people are going to be still going on singing Amazing Grace with the full service and not one person be from that church to be gone? Yes, it's possible. And they're going to go to their favorite restaurant and say, oh, those people ain't here, where are they? They're gone. You weren't. That's going to be the surprise man. Many people who don't know God don't know God and there's no wisdom. It's that simple. We had a woman come up the other day to us. Oh, you're, you're, you just preach yourself. You don't know nothing. You've been here four years. They don't know who I am. Only three, three or four times I'll mention my name. But boy, there's Jesus, 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 Jesus. Go, go back and check out all the videos. It's Jesus. I know Jesus. You know what? I know me. 
If you knew me, you wouldn't be sitting here listening to me unless it was for Jesus only. Amen. I'd be afraid what things I would teach if I didn't have the Lord. <laughs> Psalms 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding. Now, we just read from Job, understanding was to depart from sin. A good understanding. Departing from your sin is good. The Bible says there is none that do it good. No, not one. There are people out there sinning, 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 sinning. And then they go to church the next day. Or they do their religious thing the next day. Or they get up before the class or they do their scientific wonders before their God. And they're not doing good. A good understand have all they to do His commandments. His praise endureth forever. Command, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness, shall not lie. Pulpits are full of lies. Mm -hmm. There are Christians I know, they steal, but they fight that temptation at times. They'll lose. Their sins you will lose. That sin, that one sin that begets in your life, every once in a while you say, no. And the next time you may give in. But no. Next time. See, you got the way, you're just struggling. You're in a battle. You're in a battle. But you have understanding. I'm not to do this. I know the Lord. I know I'm not supposed to do this. First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins. See, that's where the battle is. See, now we're getting not only in the realm of wisdom and man's wisdom and out of education, of evolution, teaching our God, but we're getting to the fact is, you know what? We know God. We know what's wrong. And we battle. It's called repentance. That's not what the world teaches. Proverbs 1.7 Proverbs 1 7. Who is priest who is me? Uh -huh. Now, by our house, there is no priest. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of no Oh, there's knowledge. Knowledge has shown up. But fools. Despise wisdom and instruction. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I'm not doing that. You're a fool. Yeah. Now, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Knowledge is no, what you know. Wisdom is how to apply what you know. Understanding is your, as far as the Bible, is your relationship to God. I know how to put a key in a car and start it. Rachel does it. I know how to put the car in D and drive. That is wisdom. I can use the car to go pick up things for church, go pick up people for church, or pick up somebody for a Bible. That is understanding. All right, people may know chemical floor, uh, formulas. They may be able to take those chemical formulas and make medicine, make fire stuff, make whatever they make with those chemical stuff. But if they don't know God and can't use it for God, they don't know nothing. There is no wisdom. Because you've got to know God for wisdom. And some of them things that they take and make is used for sin. Well, they haven't departed from understanding. When they made penicillin, it was a saved man. When uh, Booker T. Washington did all his experiments. I'm not Booker T. Washington. Yeah, was it Washington? Washington, it when he made those experiments with all the seeds and all the vegetation, he loved the Lord and was saved. And said, Lord, what can I do for you with all the stuff he made? The man that one day that discovered, oh, here's a plant I can smoke and make you feel, ooh, and then venture it out, and let's make it law in some states. That's not wisdom. That's anything but wisdom. That's no instruction. That's man. Proverbs 9.10. Proverbs 9.10. We're looking at what man knows and what a Christian knows. What man ought to know. And he won't. And there are people you will deal with, they will trust their sciences, they will trust their history, but they won't trust God. Week after week after week for four years, we more sense 
taught the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures that you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And they're out there, they'll believe anything, anything, but even nothing. And think we're foolish and mock us. And, and there are some that do believe, but I'm talking about the unsaved ones, the ones who will not get right and not ever get right. Because what that guy is preaching across the street is stupid. It's stupid. And yet the Bible says you're the stupid one. I've got wisdom. You don't. And unless you come to Christ and believe on Him, then you become wise. It's reversed. And it's calling the good evil and the evil good. They're calling us evil, but they're good. No, they're not. So again, when we look at uh, Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord, that's what's lacking of men. There's no fear of God. That bumper sticker when we grew up, no fear. That's stupid. I don't know if I'm allowed to say the word stupid, but I try to say the word stupid a lot of times. Stupid is a wonderful word. I got in trouble at work for using the word stupid. So I used it more. The fear of the Lord. I fear the Lord. Not all the time, but I do. When I don't fear the Lord, I don't have understanding. When I sin. When we sin is when we don't fear the Lord. When you go ahead and do it. Oh, the Lord's not coming. He's delaying. He'll come back from ten years from now. He, won't, he may come back and catch you. That's right. You know? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. How's that? Wise. We already read that over and over. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Knowledge of the holy. So tell me, Tracy, do you think that the three wise men who came to Jesus is born? Birth. You go outside a certain church and say, do you believe the three wise men? Yeah, you don't know only. First of all, there was no three. We don't know. And second of all, they didn't show up as birth. He showed up in the house when he was a young child. All right. What's the first holy thing in the Bible? Ground. Dirt. Moses, remove your feet. This holy ground. I'm not... Can't remove, remove your feet. feet. Remove your feet. Get amputated. <laughs> Control your walk. Jesus Christ suffered and died and buried that I may have eternal life. We know that. That's the knowledge of the Holy. We know that there's a God, there's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We know that. That's the knowledge of the Holy. People don't know that. We know that if we were to die right now, now Luke 16 says angels carried uh, Lazarus to Abraham's bosom. Well, is that going to happen to me? No, the Bible says absent from the body, present with the Lord. We didn't have time for the angels to show up. I said, well, what, when a relative died, they said, oh, we saw these angels come down. Impossible! Because the scriptures say, absent from the body, present with the Lord, the angels would not even have time. It's not even a measure of time. See, we know these things. We're continuing to learn these things. We're going out before Jacob's trouble. We don't have to worry about the 666. Many, many Christians don't know that. Oh, don't get that. Listen, they came to me today and they said, well, we're going to put a mark. We're going to, if, you, if it's the law, Romans 13, okay, you have to do it. If it's the law, Romans 13, you've got to obey the law. You've got to obey the power. That's what God said. We have knowledge of things that the world don't have knowledge in. We have assurance. We have authority. We have the Bible. We have a Savior. They don't. So, knowledge. I know God and God knows me. And as, as long as he tarries, as long as I study, the Bible says study, what do you do to study? You learn more. God will show you more. God will give you more. It's interesting. Classes never end with the Bible unless you want to end them. When you shut your Bible and say, that's it, I'm done, God says, okay, fine. I don't much more stuff for you to learn, but do what you will. Uh, that was nine, Proverbs 15, 33. Proverbs 15.33. Proverbs, you know, what you need to learn. Proverbs was written by the most wisest man ever to be by God. God said, Solomon, far past all the wisdom, all the wise men. And God said, write this down. Proverbs 15.33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Look, now you get instruction. God will instruct you. And before honor, 
It's humility. There's no pride when it comes to God. Oh, I've seen pride. I've seen pride in churches. And that destroys the church. Pride goes before a fall. Instruction. So now I fear God. I have wisdom of God. I am wise of God. And God says, I'll give you more instruction. I'll give you more. He'll never end filling us as long as we want to be filled. Listen, 1987, the first thing I knew when I got saved was, Dad, you're going to hell. And now I can write down a letter. I can, I, we talked to my grandmother. I, I talked to her one time before I, Tracy came. And Tracy and I talked to her one time. And we talked to her and we talked to her. And we found, the last time we talked to her, we found out we got a whole bunch of stuff out of her. We didn't, I didn't even know about a Catholic church and all that. Mm -hmm. By Bible. We can deal with homeless people. We can deal with, with religious people and people who got out of UFOs and gone back in UFOs. We've gone to people, you're talking about yourself. That's not what you, you're drawing people away. This or that. Or I, we can deal with people as what God has dealt with us. And if you want to go on more, we can, I can classify you more and more to people. I am not bragging, but I can drive Jehovah Witnesses away. I can have them call the police on me. I can have them threaten to call the police on me. And that one's on video. I'd like to tell them, hey, you can't come in my house. But let me show you a little video about you guys wanting to call the police on me visiting your door. We went to the Kingdom Hall, and we went up to them to talk to them. You know, that's their home. They come up to our home and knock. He walked up there outside at the end of the driveway and he went, knock, knock, knock. It's all on video. And he's like, I want to share the, you know, the, the, gospel. the gospel with you. And they said, get out of here. We're going to call the cops. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. But they show up at our door. Not anymore, though. Not they know anymore. No, Isaiah. Yeah. Isaiah 33. Yeah. They don't show up at my door no more. I've gotten home too late because I've been threatened to go walking down the road. I got home without a car phone one day. So come on, let's go. <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to teach against you guys. They hate me. Right now, we got if they're set up down at the, the farmer's, market. farmer's market, as soon as they see our car, they start packing up. And all I, all I say to them is, Thomas said, my Lord, my God, explain it to me. And they get so upset. There's... If I said to you, un any unsaved man, my Lord, my God, what all would... All he says. I mean, they're, they're good people, don't get, don't get me wrong, but they're close And the farmer's people. market guy called the cops because he said that to them. and dro He said, you drove them. They have just as much right to be here, and you drove them uh, away. All he said was, Thomas said, my Lord, my God. I know what you're saying. So Isaiah 33, <laughs> verse 6. Wisdom and knowledge shall be stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. You want to be stable as a Christian? You want to be stable as a man? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ be saved. You want to be stable as a Christian? Study the word of God. We are seeing loved ones falling away in a group massively. A Bible-believing church. And yet they can't see the Scriptures. They have lost their stability of the Scriptures and put it on a man. And not the man Christ Jesus. Man's wisdom. They may know everything. They may know a lot of things. But if you do not know God, you're a fool. Plain and simple. You'll stand at the great white throne judgment and your name will not be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. It may be written on diplomas. It may be written on scrolls of schools. But if it's not in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're a fool and cast off forever. And you don't even get a name no more. Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. The rich man went into hell. What's the rich man's name? We have no idea. The Bible says the Lamb's Book of Life is open up. If their names are not in that book, they're cast off in the lake of fire. They have no name. So, the names in the Lamb's Book of Life, it, our names are people lost or pe it's people that are saved because there is no name of a lost man. We are known. Daniel, we, you are known in heaven. We are known to God by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. 
If, you know, they say it's not what you know, it's who you know. Well, when it comes to salvation, it is who you know. Jesus Christ. That's right. You can't go to Mary. You can't go in there with, with Gabriel. You can't go in there with Maloni. You can't go in there with Bologna. You only go in there by Jesus Christ and not by religion. So back to Romans 1. Romans chapter 1. That's man. That's, that's man. If man does not know God, he's a fool. No matter how smart he is. I said at Tootsie Roll, I'm surprised they don't hand out smarties in churches. Mm. I think they're smarty pants. <laughs> so, Romans 1 23. And change, <coughs> excuse me, change the glory of the uncorruptible God. We have an uncorruptible God. He's never going to die, he's never going to rot, he's never going to lie. Into an image made like to corruptible man. You put a man in the ground, he's going to. He's going to start breaking down. He's going to ooze. He's going to goose. He's going to rot to his bones. Like a crumpled man into birds, four-footed beasts, and creepy things. That's the product there of evolution. We came from nothing. And then we were amoebas in the ocean. We became fish. And the fish walked out of the on the sand and started walking around and started swinging in trees with bananas and then they got themselves electric razor with no electricity and shaved all their hair off and then here we are a great man with professing here have a pill that's the religion of evolution it never explains the woman the man well, what about the woman God told you, he put Adam to sleep one day, knocked him out, opened up his side, took out his rib, closed up the flesh thereof, and, and I, he brought him to Adam, and I was like, whoa, woman. There he is. There's your wife. And from the beginning of that, a man shall leave his father and mother. Adam, you don't have a father and mother. Where'd you get that from? You got that from knowing God. You got that from the wisdom of God. Amen. Prophecy. Adam prophesied. That's a lot better than coming from Nothing. The fact is, when we read the end of Luke chapter 3, Adam, the son of God, were of God. That's simple. God is able to do everything. I mean, evolution does not explain. All right, let's say if I'm born without a hand. Well, where in evolution did that happen? And you look at the Bible, so what we was born without a hand? Sin. Well, what sin? Not what sin. It's man is born unto sin as a spark flying upward. When you're born of a woman, you are born of trouble. You are born of tri trials and tribulation and crises. Job says, oh, if I would have been an untimely bird. Jeremiah said, oh, if I would have died in my mother's womb. But I'm born, and look at all this agony and defeat. Sin. A cursed world, Genesis 3. That's the answer for all this. And the Bible says... Do whatever you want. The world is going to burn up. Hug Mother Earth. She's going to go on fire one day. You can't save her. As far as the whales crawling up on the beach, leave them alone. They're trying to grow legs and walk off. Stop dragging them out in the ocean. It's funny. They'll tell you that they grew legs yeah. and they but they, want to, but they want to push them back in the water. You, you define know. evolution. Yeah. No. So, you say you believe one thing and then you do another. So man has rejected God. And what have we been studying? What have we been studying? Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through their lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie. I hate to be at the judgment before God on that one. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever, evolution. And for this cause God gave them up to vile affliction. For even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. And likewise also men leaving the natural use of women. Burned in their lust one to another. Men with men. Sodomy. That's America today. That's the world today. Amen. The product of evolution is sodomy. And God says, I gave you up. And you read through the, we're not going to read through it. God gave them up. Now, what does this have to tie in with John chapter 1? Man rejected God, and God turned off the light, and he went into darkness. And what's the darkness performed? Well, I think we are going to read more. 
Verse 26, For this cause God gave them up to vile fiction. For even their women did change the natural use of that which is against nature, lesbianism. And likewise also men leaving the natural use of women, uh, gay, burned in their lusts one to another, men with men working that which is unseemly, sodomy, and receiving themselves recompense of their error. It's an error which it was me. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, what we just read about, they have no knowledge. They have no wisdom. Because they reject God. Watch this. God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to those things which are not convenient, with all these hot shots saying how wise I am, look at all the degrees I am, I'm a doctor, I'm a DD, I'm a psychopathic, I don't know God, I am an idiot. I am a fool. I am stupid. Even though I'm worldly wise. You don't know God. And what does you not know God? What does it do? It makes you even more of a sinner. It makes you more of a... And everything you do for the world affects the world wrongly, sinfully. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. What do we read through Job, Psalms, Proverbs? You're a fool. They did not like to retain God in there. God gave them a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled, ready, with all unrighteousness. God is righteous. That's opposite of God. Fornication. Wickedness. God is, God is holy. God is right. That's an opposite of God. Covetousness. Thou shalt not cover it. Malicious. Full of envy. Envy. That's what they delivered Jesus Christ over to Pilate. And said. Pilate said, for the high priest gave him over because of envy. Murder. You know, shall not kill. Debate. Oh, there are, there are Baptists out there who have debate with false religions. The Bible says that's a sin. Debate. Deceit. Deceiving others. Oh, that's a practice today. Malignity. Whisperers. Backbiters. Haters of God. Oh, look at them. Despiteful. Proud. Boasters. Inventors of evil things. See, they've used their mind that should have been for God. They use it for evil. Dis disobedient to parents. That's not today, is it? Without understanding. Now, what have we been reading? It's Job, Psalms, Proverbs. The result of their sins, the result of turning away from God, has turned them from the understanding of the holy unto that which is unholy, wicked. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affliction, leaving their babies behind, putting them in dumpsters and garbage cans, killing them. Unplacable, unmerciful, chopping off your head while the guy pleading for his life. Raping a woman in the name of your religion while she pleads, don't do it. Unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of now wait a minute, wait a minute. What did we read off in John 1? It said that God had put into our hearts. John chapter 1, stay where we are in Romans, I'll read to you. This, is the, this was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh in the world first, I mean, first time. John 1, 9. Now watch this. Who knowing the judgment of God. They know God is going to judge them one day. They know it. How do they know? How do you know they know? Well, as far as I remember, when I was an unsaved man, I'd go into a bar. It was dark. Hardly any lights. Were, what, what are you trying to hide from? Why not turn all the lights on? You're trying to hide from somebody. You go in the darkness to hide. That first cigarette I ever had, I, I, I hid. I didn't want my parents to find me. I didn't want them to see me. I thought, I hid. Why? Because you know some kind of judgment's coming. That's imparted into your heart by God. You'll stand before me one day. But if I put, we come from age. Well, there's nothing. There's nothing. I don't have to give account to nothing. They all happen by accident. That's it. So, you send a boy who has killed a schoolyard of people, you send them to a place of correction without God, remove the Bible, remove God, because that's what they're doing in the prisons today, and bring in Islam, which they are doing today, and, and hey, if I tell my provider that... I'm Jewish or Islam, I get the greatest meals in this prison. I'm Jewish or I'm Islam, so I can get the greatest meals. I'll depart the Bible so I can get some good food. I've been told by a person who runs the prison, or part of the prison system. Your dietary needs. That's not bringing you to God. That's not teaching you God. You don't. But 
Well, let me ask you a question. What is the responsibility of parents? When that child has done something wrong, he has broke the lamp by playing with the ball in the house. Bad example for us to you. Why does that child go run and hide? What is those characteristics of those parents to be for that child? You did it. You're going to face consequences. And what are they to teach? What are they embed into the behind of that child? The Bible said, if you do it before God, you're going to be punished. Unless First John 1, 1. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. All right, that's God, isn't it? What eyes do nothing have to see you? How about religion? Really? Your church building it sees me? Your spirits can see? They don't have eyes. But God does. Amen. So, now when you look at the education system, the science system of evolution, it's all to teach everyone there is no God, there is no responsibility. You have full liberty to do whatever you want, but there's no responsibility. And this, this shooting, these beatings, the activity of our youth today is only because of what you taught in schools. It's only going to happen even worse because you're not going to put God back in school. You're not going to get that revival. You will not get it. It's not going to come. Because the President of the United States, Donald Trump, is not going to stand up and say, NBC and everybody, I believe Jesus Christ is my Savior and you all shut up. No one's going to work Sundays. Everybody's going to go to church on Sunday. A Bible-believing church is compulsory. Oh, church and state. There were kings in the Bible said, we're going to serve God. If you don't like it, we're going to make your house a dunghill. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar said, if you make fun of the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abraham, your house is going to be gone. You're going to be gone. The God that protected Daniel, all of you get in the lion's den. But America cries, church and state. Baptist. You ain't going to get that revival. And I just turned off the TV and many people of listening to that. But that's the truth. They have turned God into nothing. I don't care what it is. It's still nothing. The Roman Catholic Church to God, it's nothing. Never been, has never been. It's not found in the pages of the Bible. To believe that reincarnation, there has never ever been, there is nothing in the Bible about reincarnation. That's nothing. It's not God. We've read today through Job, through Psalms, through Proverbs, Isaiah. You have to have the knowledge of God to get the knowledge of the Holy. And we read in Romans chapter 1, verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God, they know, they just don't realize they know. Their conscience. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. Death penalty. Not only do the same, all the things we just mentioned, Knowing God's going to judge them, but had pleasure in them that do them. We got the word pleasure showing up. They don't want to know God. They're dancing in their parades. They're in their dark rooms of their pubs. They're doing it secret behind whosoever faces and eyes. And I like doing it. God. Remember the other thing we learned on that verse was maybe you don't do those things, but. You watch others that are doing it, such as actors on TV, yep. movies. Yep. Uh, and you That's have, Hollywood. And you have pleasure watching them do those things. You're just as guilty because you're having pleasure in watching what they're doing. Yeah. So, the, the, the fear we are to have is God. That's not out there. The only way we grow in the Lord is by having the fear of the Lord wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And we have seen again. We have seen again. And we studied this, I don't know how many weeks ago, who knowing the judgment of God, we've, we've already studied that. You already have known from the birth, I told you, like I said, when I was six years old, I would give earthworms to God. <laughs> but in my heart, there was God. I know there's a judgment coming. And you say, well, how can you say, well, if you're going to serve the Lord in the millennia, if you're going to get uh, rewards and crowns, because I may get caught with unconfessed sins. And Second John says, I mean, there is a cause in there that you can lose your rewards. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know when the Lord's coming back. I don't know when He's going to catch me. Hopefully He would catch me at that moment when I, I bow my heart to confess all my sins that I'm able to confess. But if He catches me in a particular sin that's worse than all the sins, which all have sinned, you can lose. And I have more credit than the unsaved man because I have more knowledge of the Holy. You know why Israel is going to go through a time called Jacob's trouble? Seven years. Because God gave them the law. God gave them their word. God gave them prophets. God spoke to them. They ought to know better. Now, the church, more than the Jew today, we have a complete Bible. We have the word. We're to go to the Jews and the world and preach to them the gospel. And that's not happening in the churches today. Not many churches are going out with the gospel. They're going out with, you know, bazaars and, and cakes and, and whatever else they do. But back to John 1. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh in the world. He was made, he was in the world. We know that, we believe that, right? People don't believe that ever Jesus Christ walked in the world. And the world was made by Him. We've already looked at the creation, the Creator. Not many people believe that Jesus is the Creator. There are people who believe God created it, but not Jesus. We learned something. And the world knew Him not. Oh, we know that. So we, we just moved on to another verse. We're going to stop right there. And we're going to pick up from verse 10, and we're going to get into more and more great things. But we ventured on from, from another verse. But it all comes down to what we, what we studied so far. Man that is born, he's born with intelligence. All right? Nobody else can give us the intelligence we have. All right? right? I have not seen ever a monkey build a factory. I don't see a bird with blueprints make his nest. So that defies evolutionary teaching. There's only one particular being of all the beings that has the intelligence to help or kill their fellow beings. Now, that had to be God. God had to separate the creation. These are men, these are elephants, and these are cows, and these are fish, and these are birds. And we are born with that knowledge that came with us that there is a God. And we're going to be somehow be accountable to that God. And as we grow up, our parents are to show us the judgment of God. That when you do something wrong, you're going to be caught, and I'm going to deal with you. It's better I deal with you than God dealing with you. Mm -hmm. And we're to teach the children proper repentance that boo hoo 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 as Rachel would do. She'll start crying before him and be like, I haven't even touched you yet. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, spare not for their crying because it's false tears. And with that teaching there, there are people say, oh, I'm sorry. And they walk away and go do it again because you were caught. But the proper, 1 John 1, 9, Lord God, and like we learned today, I have sinned against you. I know you. I have the wisdom of you. I understand you don't want me to do that, and I am sorry. Well, that brings instruction. Well, God, I do it so what? Well, now you, you, you turn away from God. And we're dealing with, with people who have been given light as the same light we've been given, Jesus Christ in the Bible. King James Bible. Tracy, King James Bible and Jesus. Nothing else. King James Bible and, and Jesus. King James Bible and Jesus. That's the same thing every man gets. That's the same thing we give to him at the farmer's market. That's the same thing we give to the flea market. That's the same thing we give to the cashier. Same man that just came up looking for water. It's the same thing you gave him God. It's the same thing. But according to evolution and religion, we all ought to get together around Jesus and hug him and love him, but we don't. And there are people who get light by God, by salvation. Oh, I believe Jesus. And even still among the Christians, there are some Christians, okay, that's it, I'm staying, 
I'm going to be retarded in growth. I'm not going any further. And that light we're looking at John chapter 1, it stops. You have a little tiny night light. You're saved, but you don't want to do anything with it. And you've got people out there who are bright light, bright shine, the brightest light halogens, and you're coming down the road, and they're blinding because they want more from God. They want more from the Bible. They want to do something for God. And you even make Christians blinded. But even so, when you look at the lost and dying world, to them it's bright because they don't have any such light. And we've got to be careful that we don't blind them. We go back to that little light. But then we've got to realize that when we do witness to a lost and dying world, some are going to go right, some of them are going to go wrong. And that's what John 1, so far, we've been teaching it in 10 verses. Not everybody's going to get saved. But if you do get saved, you can grow that light. You can get that light brighter. You can get it brighter and brighter. Stay in the Word. Stay with the Lord. Keep going. Don't give up. Amen. This is 8 verses of chapter 1 of John. And we still got how many chapters left? I mean, I don't know if the Lord's going to come before we finish or if we are ever going to finish with death and all that. But we are going to right now a preview. Like I said, I'm already yes. with my notes. We're going into the tribulation period. No, we don't go into the tribulation period. We're going to study things in the tribulation period. We're going to do baby food. We're going to hear it, eat your baby food. We're going to do breast milk. Uh, it, it, it's, it's liquid. You can't handle anything else. And we're going to look at meat. We're going to look at a, a steak in the Bible. Just John. And it's as simple as book. And but look in eight verses and all we we looked at from creation to why men won't get saved. And the fact is that even when we're born, we're born with there is a God. Amen. And when we're dealing with people, one of the things that I do, oh I don't believe God, I, I try to get that out when they were children and they believed in God at one point. You know? Ways of dealing with people. A lot of ministries you can't. You, I mean, when you preach on the street, you got maybe a minute before they walk past you and go on. You, it's not a place. But at, at the flea market, you're just sitting there and you got something and you have time, 5, 10, 15 minutes and you're, you're able to talk to them. Now with, with John 1, hopefully you can, you know, where does this guy stand on ground? Where is this light? If he's got any light. And he's rejecting light. Well, maybe if I go try to find where that light was turned off. That's what John's growing us. And also grows us as Christians. Amen. Lord God the Father, I want to learn more. Amen. And yet, Lord, the more I learn, the more responsibility you put on me. And Lord, I'm going to be harsh. You have given me all kinds of knowledge of the Word of God. And yes, we'd be faithful with four people here to study your Word. But Lord, uh, you and I can do more. You and I can do more. you got to bring them. We've tried. We've invited. We're still inviting. We're still getting the Word of God out. We're casting our bread upon the waters. We have planted the seed, Lord. Can we start to see some seedlings? Lord, can we build a foundation church here? Or South Daytona? If not Daytona, with the vile wickedness that this city is in. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be Daytona, Lord. If we South Daytona, Port Orange, or even Holly Hill is as bad a place I thought that was. Lord, can we be grounded as a church? Holy on your word. Because Lord, I believe you're coming. I believe that you'll come even before this church has an end. And I've seen the end of these churches today. But Lord, the Bible says where two or three are gathered together, and we're four. You sat among us, Lord. I hope you're pleased. I hope what we taught today, you can say, well done. And Lord, if I sinned in any way, if I said anything I wasn't supposed to say, if I've done anything I wasn't supposed to say, do, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. For Jesus' sake, I pray. Amen. The sun went in.